All right, guys, welcome to another video. Today we have a special guest. We have Ben from Blueberry Markets. All right, Ben, so can you introduce a little bit about what Blueberry Markets is all about and why should people pick you? Absolutely, sure. So um, firstly, we're an Australian broker. Uh, we've been in operation for uh, almost five years now. Essentially, we're a young group of people who have all been in the industry for quite some time and wanted to set up a broker that we would want to trade with ourselves. Um, the big point was was really wanting to change the perception of how the Forex markets are perceived and how Forex brokers are perceived. And, and we wanted to do that just by offering um, really amazing customer service. So I think that's how we sort of differ from a lot of the other brokers is, is by really putting ourselves uh, in the client's shoes as we're all traders ourselves. We've gotten to a point where we have 2,000 five-star reviews online now, which is which is basically unheard of. So along with the you know great spreads, fast execution, we actually have 24-7 uh, service as well. Every single client will have a dedicated account manager also being regulated by ASIC. Uh, so so we just really wanted to set out and, and do something a little bit different. And it seems like no one else was really offering that amazing customer service. A lot of retail traders, they want to know whether you're a market maker, ECN or STP. So, so we would fall under the uh, the STP category straight through processing. But as we uh, have a markup to our spread, we have to have a market maker license, as would any Australian broker um, over here. While we might be the counterparty to some trades, uh, some trades go through to the interbank as well. Um, it's basically a mix of that. What are the things that retail traders should look at when they are choosing a broker? It all really comes down to, to reputation and regulation. So uh, when I started in the industry about 11 years ago, the main focus for, for brokers was to have spreads as tight as possible. Um, that's what all brokers were competing on. Uh, now, a few years went by and most brokers have very similar spreads across the board. Regulation became the main key, uh, but then a lot of you know tier two, tier three countries started improving their regulatory bodies. So a, a lot of brokers became quite competitive on the regulation fronts. Now, from what we've seen, it's really online reviews and reputation. So it's something that we didn't really focus on too much in the early days, but we realized how how many clients are just looking for brokers that that have a good reputation and are going to be safe. Um, so at the end of the day, it just comes down to doing your research. Online reviews are one of the best places to learn about your brokers, and if you really want to get granular, especially Australian brokers, you can do an ASIC search on them, which is the Australian Securities and Investments Commission. Search on the people behind the broker, do a LinkedIn search, you know, find out whatever you can about uh, the people who are behind the broker. A lot of people also have this concern about the efficiency of the withdrawal of funds. So can you tell us a little bit about how efficient is your withdrawal process and also safety of funds? Absolutely. Uh, so our withdrawal process, uh, the withdrawals are processed right away uh, within business hours. Um, then it usually takes about one to two days to, to receive the funds. When it comes to safety of funds, in my opinion, this is the first thing you should ask your broker. Um, as we're regulated by ASIC here in Australia, they follow the Australian client money laws, basically meaning the funds are kept separate from your day-to-day -day business operations. Uh, at the end of the day, there's always risks when you hold your funds with any financial institution. But if you're going to pick a broker, make sure they're fully regulated in a you know a decent area actually in any industry people can do weird things like they can buy awards they can also pay people to write reviews i watched youtube there's a documentary where they feature people who just write reviews for a living give testimonials for a living so what is your opinion about that? <laughs> That's an interesting one. I mean, we get approached about buying awards all the time. And it's, in my opinion, it's one of the, the dirtiest parts of this industry is that you can go buy an award that will say that you've done this. Um, and buying reviews, I mean, we still have negative reviews on our, our sites as well. Um, you know, there's, there's a big mix of reviews on there, but we really try and focus. If someone does give us a negative review, I'll personally reach out to that person to try and change their experience. Um, we have no interest in going out and paying for reviews you get caught out right away. Places like Forex Peace Army are all over that. You know, they check IP addresses. Um, that's just something I have no interest in. Yeah, I agree. Um, any broker, no matter how perfect they are, they would have negative review. Just like how even I have negative review myself too. Like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's... It's it's part and parcel of of the industry. I have no I have no issues with people writing negative reviews as long as they're the truth. Um, you know, there's we have no complaints over that. 
just make sure that when you pick a broker, the negative review should not be more than the positive review. Otherwise, you'll be yes. very, very or a, a, That's right. A minimum amount of negative reviews would be ideal. But also have a good read of the positive reviews as well. It's, I think it's pretty easy to tell which reviews are fake and, and which aren't. Um, so, so, you know, have a good read of the reviews. Yeah, yeah. I've read somewhere that if everything is five-star review, then it is all fake. So, so what are some of the mistakes that you see a lot of retail traders make when they are trying to pick a broker? I would say it all comes down to uh, trading with someone who has no regulation whatsoever. That, that's where I hear most of the horror stories from. Um, I've had clients say to me, you know, I opened an account with this broker, I deposited funds with them, and then I just haven't been able to get hold of them. When you look for a broker, they should have their regulation clearly stipulated down the bottom of the website, and it will clearly dictate their license number and so on. If you're not seeing this on a, on a broker, then it's just one to steer clear of. I mean, there's no regulatory body behind them. If something goes wrong, you have no recourse or, or any action of, of trying to correct it. So just steer clear of brokers that have zero regulation. Yeah, I agree. And I also see a lot of retail traders, they, they email me all the time and then they're like, can you recommend me a broker with high leverage and low spread? I'm like, <laughs> that's all you look at? And yeah. that's a lot of retail traders' uh, mistake. That's one mistake that um, you guys should avoid if you're watching this. And also the other thing is that People watch movies and then they're like, oh my God, brokers are just bad people. What are some of the common misconceptions that people often have about brokers? Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that brokers are always wanting you to lose, uh, so to speak, or that there's you know constant manipulation. And it is something that I still see. Unfortunately, there are brokers out there that are unregulated and you can see incorrect slippage, massive gaps on the chart. Um, but again, it all comes back to trading with a, a regulated broker. And we're very open and upfront and honest uh, about how we work. We can sometimes be the counterparty to trades. But the important thing to know is that there's no manipulation. The prices that we get come directly from our liquidity providers. The main goal for us is just to have as many active clients as possible and to have clients trading with us for as long as possible. If all our clients were to lose, we'd have no one trading with us. We'd have a lot of unhappy clients. We basically want active clients. Winning clients are happy clients at the end of the day. And, and that's, that's basically what's most important to us is to have happy clients. Every broker has clients that make, that make money and also clients that lose money. So Based on your analysis and statistics of your clients, what do you think winners have in common and what do you think losers have in common? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would probably say that the winners all seem, seem to have very good discipline. Um, they stick to their strategy no matter what the noise is showing in the markets. They've usually will come close to mastered the psychology side of trading. So, so they don't get bent out of shape when they have a losing trade. They move on to the next. They continue to stick to their strategy without wavering. They're not blaming everyone else. The losers tend to try and chase losses, you know, place unnecessary hedges to try and protect their accounts. I, I would say the biggest issue or biggest thing that I see in common for people who are losing traders would be not managing risk properly. Um, you know, placing trades that are way too big for their account size. You know, I see people placing one lot trades on a thousand dollar balance many many times and it's just going to get your account into into trouble right away yeah i agree in fact other brokers have also done some studies they found out that those clients account who last long they tend to manage their risk better as compared to those people who want to yep. get rich quick so the other thing about the brokerage industry is that we see a lot of advertisement where certain brokers they market things like you can start with low capital and then high leverage and then earn tons of money. So what do you think about those kind of marketing messages? Yeah, it's not, I mean, I think it's sort of getting into a messy category, whereas if that's what they're trying to advertise and that's what they want, they want clients coming in trading on high leverage, where if, if someone's new to trading and they just want to start off small, they shouldn't be trading on high leverage. You know, they should be managing their risk accordingly to the size of the account. And that doesn't mean trading on one to 1,000 leverage, you know, start off on one to 100 or one to 50 um, and place micro lots just to get the feel of it. Sometimes those ads, uh, I think you have to be quite wary of. What do you think retail traders should look at? 
in order to find out, okay, is this a scam broker or is this a legit good broker? The regulation firstly and reviews online. Um, then I would suggest asking your broker as many questions as possible. You know, ask some of these questions that you've asked me, ask how they deal with their risk, ask how they take care of withdrawals, ask where their client funds are held. Um, these are all the type of things, you know, if you get any hesitation asking these questions, then this broker is not the one to trade with. They should be able to answer these questions right away with no hesitation. So with Blueberry Markets, what are some of the platforms that traders can start trading with? Sure. So uh, at the moment, we're using MT4 and MT5. Um, so this is where we have the most demand from at the moment. It's the, the easily the most popular platforms in the world. Um, but as we continue to grow, um, you know, we're always open to add new platforms. So if anyone has any suggestions, um, please reach out to us. We're always happy to add in whatever we can to, to make our clients happy. Somebody wants to join Blueberry Markets as a yep. client, they would have a representative to take care of them. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So every single client has their own dedicated account manager here um, at Blueberry Markets. So when you sign up, you'll receive an email from them. Those are the people you can speak to. And as I said as well, we have 24-7 customer service. So if that account manager is not, not here, jump onto our live chat, email support at Blueberry Markets. You know, you'll be able to get a hold of someone all the time. Guys, one thing that's really important as I've always talked about in my channel, is um, you gotta have you gotta pick a broker with good customer service because if you cannot reach your broker when you cannot close your trade, then that is an issue. So yes, scary times. You don't want to be in that situation. If viewers want to join and check out Blueberry Markets, where can they go to? So just go straight to blueberrymarkets.com. Um, there's a button to open a live account there. Um, and there's a link in the description as well that I believe Karen has put there. And if you use that link, she has been extremely generous to give those people a 40% discount on our courses for people who set up a funded live accounts. Um, I would suggest checking out Karen's courses because she's done years of work and studies basically so that you don't have to. Um, and check us out at blueberrymarkets.com, as I said, and you can come see what all the hype's about and uh, reach out to us. So with that, um, thank you, Ben, for being in this interview with us. Hopefully, all of you guys have gotten something important or useful from Ben. And if you want more of these kind of interviews with brokers and all that, also let me know, let us know. All right. So with that, I'll talk to you in the next interview. Bye. Thank you very much, Karen. Bye-bye.